Hello, this is John Kanalopoulos from Athens, Greece. I will show you a fascinating application of the FS200 wave-like femtosecond laser. As you can see here, designing a penetrating keroplasty with a side zigzag uh, cut. This is the FS200 femto here directly on the um, actual host. Uh, this is a failed graft, so we will go with the um, FS200 uh, patient interface seen here. This is done under peribulbar anesthesia, and uh, we will applinate the patient's cornea. We will see where the old graft interface is, and we will apply the uh, uh, zigzag pattern. You can see here it starts from posterior coming up to anterior, uh, centered on the patient's pupil. The diameter uh, is uh, seven and a half millimeters. Uh, very eloquently done by the femto, and um, this is uh, real-time trephination by the femto. Um, the actual uh, trephination uh, time of the host is not being edited. Uh, as you can see, patient is very comfortable. Uh, the um, actual uh, patient interface is single-use. We will throw away this PI, uh, dispose the PI, and then go with a new PI onto the donor. Uh, tissue. Um, we use excellent donor tissue uh, from the uh, Denver um, Eye Bank, the Mountain uh, Lions Eye Bank. This is a catena disposable anterior chamber. We will place the donor, and you can see there's a nice scleral rim around the donor in order to secure the uh, rim of the artificial anterior chamber. And uh, be able to reproduce uh, the physiology of anterior chamber so our femtosecond laser can tree fine this cornea from up down from outside to inside and I think this is very important in order to have the um, uh, lips of the host and the graft interface match so we will oversize this graft just by three um, notches of the millimeter so we tree find the host seven and a half millimeters will tree find the graft to 7.8 millimeters um, as you can see here a drop of uh, vigamox to attain a good lubrication of the surface and of course antibiosis we have uh, pumped air into the um, artificial chamber to reproduce uh, ocular rigidity uh, up to about uh, 40 uh, millimeters of mercury here the uh, patient interface applinates the donor cornea and uh, we'll get a little bit more of an applination in order to make sure that uh, the amount of cornea we are going to find is uh, well applinated and as you can see here uh, the surgeon myself turns into the screen and does the final calculations where will the trephination be centered uh, lights on, uh, trephination starts again from posterior to anterior and you can see how well it, it is centered to the uh, two air pipes within the artificial chamber. Now this is a zigzag pattern which means this side trephination has a step around middle uh, so around 350 to 450 microns is a, there's a step, a tooth that goes out to 8.5 millimeters uh, in order to create more adherence uh, when the uh, graph will be sutured in place. So we're off uh, with the uh, patient interface. Uh, we will remove the cone here as well. And I'd like to uh, underline the fact that this is a disposable, 100% disposable procedure, uh, ensuring sterility. Uh, so this is now the donor cornea with the trephination will be placed back into the uh, uh, storage vial. Um, the majority of U.S. banks use optic sole solution for storage and now we're back in the OR where the actual uh, tissue is very easily removed uh, from the uh, uh, donor cornea sclera rim. We will evaluate this before we open uh, uh, the patient's trephination. So here the cornea is placed upside down just to make sure visually that it matches the parameters uh, that we performed. You can see I'm grasping with a uh, 0.12 forceps the edge of the graft which has a little step and for demonstration purposes we are uh, making sure that that edge is jugged and uh, will, as you can see here, 
will create a step within the uh, graft host interface and increase stability of the graft. Uh, this is a unique advantage that femtosecond lasers are able to give in uh, trifination of uh, tissue and host and penetrating keroplast. So we will go on to uh, the uh, uh, host where with a simple, uh, we'll place uh, the uh, donor tissue in a storage um, uh, Teflon vial, uh, one drop of Optisol to keep it uh, moist while we're preparing here. Uh, carefully, as you can see here, we reach that step, uh, which is also uh, present in the uh, uh, host. We left just a few microns uh, uh, of tissue, which we're completing with the corneal scleral scissors. Um, and uh, now we have that full uh, 360 uh, degrees uh, trephination present, some methocellulose. Uh, one intrinsic difficulty here is that there are significant posterior anterior synechiae. The iris is almost uh, glued onto the uh, host uh, uh, posterior cornea, so we'll, uh, we're doing some uh, uh, gonioplasty with uh, viscoelastic. We're placing the donor cornea uh, in place and um, uh, brilliant tissue, by the way, um, four days old. Um, it still amazes me how this tissue uh, originates in Denver and ends up in Athens within uh, uh, four days' time from uh, uh, preservation. Here, the first suture, the 12 o'clock suture, um, to start the process. Um, uh, we use 10 on nylon uh, interrupted sutures here because the uh, host bed is uh, slightly vascularized. Uh, if this was a, a vascular host bed, obviously we'd use uh, uh, 8 interrupted and a 16 pass running suture, which is my standard technique. We're down to the last, um, the 6 o'clock uh, suture, uh, which has uh, been uh, replaced. Um, we have uh, 16 sutures in total, knots are not buried yet. And uh, uh, through the procedure, we made sure that the actual um, uh, jugged edge of the zigzag technique uh, fit uh, within the um, appropriate uh, space created in the host bed. Uh, all knots uh, square, as you can see here, um, basic uh, keroplastic technique. And uh, we'll trim uh, all sutures and bury the knots in the host bed, um, uh, otherwise standard. Uh, in this particular case, we uh, instilled some uh, Vastin and Kenalog uh, to reduce the chance of inflammation because of the uh, vigorous iris manipulation. So a perfect uh, keroplastic generated by the femtosecond laser. And here, several months later, a brilliant result. Um, and I thank you very much for your attention.